<laughs> so now I'd like to ask uh, Christian, Dr. Christian Lajet to continue his presentation, and this will be final, right? Your final uh, presentation on coolants, you, coolants for fast neutron systems, which means sodium, about sodium again? No? Yes, but if you want, I have a mega pie, yeah? <laughs> let me smooth. I okay. Have, if you have some questions, I have uh, some additional Please, slides. please, choose yourself. Okay, Christian, please <laughs> go ahead. You, uh. Okay, so I will go through uh, uh, maybe this uh, more faster because some points have been uh, a little bit addressed. Uh, I will give you, I take this opportunity also to give some information on Astrid. What was Astrid? Because many of you don't know maybe what was Astrid and several times it was, uh, uh, yeah. So here, this is uh, just a simplified I'm sorry. scheme. Sorry, the screen is not shared online. Ah. Thank you. Okay, now. Yes, I think it's fine, yeah, at least I see it. No, this is again, oh my God, this is something. Uh. Now it's perfect, it's the presentation mode. It was presentation mode. Uh, yes, yes, no, no. Perfect. It's okay? Yes, please go. Now it's okay. confirming. So I'm going to speak to give you some elements because uh, materials is a large topic, so it's not uh, obvious to give uh, an overview. Uh. So just uh, because to discuss, it's important to, to have uh, what is uh, a fast reactor. It is a very simplified uh, fast reactor here because generally it's complex. So you can see here the, uh, you can see, sorry, here the, the, the core where we have the, the, the fuel assemblies and the, and the clad. Here you have the hot plenum above and the cold plenum uh, below. Uh, here you have the intermediate heat exchanger. Yeah, here you have the, uh, below the core in yellow, you have the, what we call the diagrid, is a structure where you can install the fuel assemblies in a honey, honeycomb structure. And uh, below you have the, what we call the strong back, strong back which is an uh, uh, element to uh, stabilize the, um, this uh, very important part of the reactor. You have on the right side the pump, and on the left side the intermediate heat exchanger, and then you have the energy conversion system here. We can have a steam generator, as I told you, or uh, it's possible also to have a, a gas system gas system with a Brighton cycle. You can see a picture here of a very sensitive uh, component which is called the control plug in France or it is <coughs> called also above core structure which is a, a, a control, above con control system which is uh, dedicated to the monitor the temperature at the outlet of each fuel assembly. Okay, you have a sodium in blue and uh, in gray, you have argon and the slab above. Yeah. Uh, here you have the, the rotating plugs, here in the center, small rotating plug and large rotating plug. And thanks to these uh, two plugs, you have the possibility to uh, reach any position of the core for the handling operations, I would say. And uh, uh, around here you have the main uh, components, mainly uh, primary pumps, PP, and IHX, intermediate heat exchanger. For example, here we have uh, one loop, two loops, three loops, and four loops. And uh, here we have a system with four, four loops, okay? So it's typical from Super Phoenix. Here you have the rotating plugs. It's a, a picture of the rotating plugs of uh, Super Phoenix, okay? You can see in the, here in the center of the small rotating plug, this, uh, the control, this is a place for the, what we call a control plug, okay? Uh, or above 
cost structure. Here you can see this uh, uh, component, which is uh, inserted here in order to measure temperature and, of course, to uh, provide, uh, provide handling systems, arms, in order to reach, to reach any position of the, of the core to extract, to extract the, fuel, the fuel assemblies and to transfer them from the primary circuit to the external vessel uh, for, to decrease the heat, okay? Or you know, also you have the possibility to transfer from the uh, external vessel the fresh fuel to be uh, introduced in the, in the, in the reactor. Uh, this is a uh, super phoenix, okay? With a lot of structures. Uh, just to remember, you remember I give you the surface, huh? 48,000 square meters inside. So it was uh, huge, and 3,500 tons of sodium. Here you have the description. Uh, well, uh, diameter is 21 meter. It's uh, huge. Now the reactors are more, uh, are smaller. Okay, and uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, you have here the the control plug. What I tell you, and we have a, a mechanism not only for handling operations. Mass, uh, transfer machine, okay, and in green, but you have also in the center uh, a control roads also to to shut down uh, to shut down the reactor and so on. Uh, but you can see that the geometry is much more complex than the previous uh, drawing. But to explain, it's much better to use the first one. <laughs> okay, this is a secondary loop. Okay, I presented that uh, this morning. And uh, Astrid, okay, just uh, to give you more fresh, uh, fresh <laughs> information because uh, Super Phoenix is a reference, but uh, starts to be uh, old, has been, we say. And uh, here, so it, uh, the idea was to have a technological demonstration reactor. Uh, it's a step before what we called folk, first of a kind. It means the, main, the first main reactor. Uh, the idea is to integrate French and international SFR feedback. It's a generation four system. You know maybe the requirements for generation four systems. I think it's not maybe necessary to, to detail because it's general uh, aspects, but for safety, we say a level at least equivalent to gen three systems in terms of safety. Uh, progress on sodium reactor specificities. What are the specificities? Of course, one is the capacity the possibility to have uh, sodium fire, how to deal with that, uh, or sodium water, even if it's more comfortable, according to me. Integrating the Fukushima accident feedback, it means for the decay removal systems, uh, particularly, robustness of safety demonstration, durability, so you know all these uh, aspects of Gen 4. I don't go again in detail, okay? Operability, load factor of 80% or more after first learning years. We accept to say that during the first years, we need some, uh, maybe some time to uh, consolidate and to uh, reach reliable uh, strategies. Ultimate waste transmutation, of course, and uh, master investment cost, so it's not maybe so obvious. We know that for many projects, the cost at the end is not the cost anticipated uh, at the beginning non-proliferation warranty, of course. Okay. Uh, here you have all the structure of the Astrid project. Huh? Uh, we were on the maximum 600 and more than 1,600 people working on that. Of course, there was a, a CA, the Center Contracting Authority, Strategic Management, Astrid project team, with the support of EDF, but also you can notice here we have a GAEA, which was an important partner of the project. GAEA with the Mitsubishi and uh, MFBR. And of course the R&D to support, to support uh, of course to support the, the development and some engineering activities also. We have EDF. We have uh, European R&D laboratories. We paid for that, Ardeco. Uh, we had the support of, uh, for example, Italy. Uh, Italy, we have the support of uh, Germany, Karlsruhe, 
from, um, from also from Latvia and so on. So uh, we have a CA for R&D, innovation, qualification codes, codes, specific developments, expertise. Uh, the reactor core was designed and uh, by uh, CA. The nuclear island, we have Areva, now it's a Framatome. Again, uh, GIEA and Mitsubishi. Hot cells with SEV. Power combustion system is Alstom. Civil engineering is Bouygues, which is a large, uh, big company in France. Jacobs for the balance of plant. Uh, ah, for the reliability, availability, and maintainability of the reactor, Airbus. So it's strange, but uh, we work with uh, <laughs> airplane companies. And we have also some other companies like Toshiba for the pump, ele uh, electromagnetic pump, as I told you this morning, Knim, Velarm for the valves, Rolls-Royce for the heat exchangers, uh, and so on. So many companies, and I think, and of course, uh, Framatome. So, a lot of uh, partners. Here you have a view on the, uh, on the, uh, Astrid is just to show where they were working. Uh, here you have a, a same, uh, some definition of the implementation of Astrid. Uh, we have a site uh, close to the, near the Rhone River, near Phoenix reactor, because the land belongs to EDF. And so it was uh, easy to uh, build a reactor on this land near the Rhone River. Here you have a description of the main options. I think, well, I don't go in detail because in fact, from where you are, it looks like uh, cl conventional uh, sodium fast reactors. Many sodium fast reactors looks very, just looks very similar. In fact, in more details, you have of course differences, but if you look like that, it's uh, more or less uh, the same. You have a pool type, okay? Pool type reactor, it means, you know what it means, pool type? Yes. In fact, the uh, way the main difference is that in, you have the uh, primary pumps and the uh, primary pumps and intermediate and it exchanger inside uh, the main vessel. The main advantage, of course, is to in avoid. Yeah, all the sodium, all the active inside, uh, sodium is inside the main vessel, okay? So we have a c uh, core uh, with a low sodium void works. So it was, uh, there was a special design for the core for that. Oxide fuel, uh, preliminary strategy for civil accidents with the internal core catcher. Diversified decay removal system, fuel engine system. Redan, Redan, you know what is Redan? This is the wall who separates the hot plenum from the cold plenum. And uh, three primary pumps, four intermediate heat exchangers, four secondary circuits, five decay removal circuits, and so on. Uh, main technological innovations, you can see here, you have effectively this core. Uh, equipment and dispositions to eliminate large early accidental radioactive release. Uh, equip a lot of equipments, sorry, uh, a lot of equipments for the in-service inspection. And uh, of course, uh, uh, a Brighton cycle, even just to, be, to give all the information, we have effectively the Brighton uh, equipment, but also we have uh, as a backup solution, what we call robust backup solution with the steam generators, yes, okay? So we have both, one is innovative uh, with uh, maybe a TRL, which has to be uh, uh, increased. But if, you, if we decide to build this reactor, maybe, uh, and say we need them very quickly, we, we will probably decide to have a ranking cycle. Okay, here, this is the reactor site, close to, uh, here you have in blue the, the Rhone River. And uh, okay, I don't go in detail. Uh, but the same, sorry, here, yes, interesting. You have the material distribution. 
So you can notice that uh, uh, we have uh, an objective, a target of 60 years, okay, life duration. We have a so-called um, uh, uh, frame uh, austenitic steel, 316 LN, okay. We have uh, here, uh, so also in some places we have coatings, and particularly on the foot of the fuel assemblies. In the past, we have uh, what we call stellite. And uh, stellite, you have a cobalt, so you induce a large dosimetry. So there are some investigation about uh, other, uh, other options for the coating, uh, hard coating, in order to avoid, to avoid any, uh, any trouble and the, any unforeseen events. Uh, about on the, wall, on the f first wall, we have, uh, we have also a double, double uh, wall. One is the main vessel. The second one is the safety, so-called safety vessel. Be, be, between the two, we have nitrogen. But we have the possibility, for example, to send the robot okay, to inspect the, the weddings. Yeah. And uh, in case of rupture of the first vessel, we, the second vessel is able to contain the, the sodium after I would say enforcing draining. Okay. Uh, all the components are in uh, austenitic steel, except the steam generator, sorry, where we have uh, 800 uh, alloy, uh, which is in fact uh, loaded with nickel to have a good uh, properties. And uh, particularly, it's well adapted for the, they are generally speaking, two different uh, steam generators, two types. One is the straight tube, and in this case, we prefer generally uh, ferritic steel. And uh, if you want to have uh, helical, uh, we prefer to have uh, this uh, 800 uh, steel. Okay. So here you have uh, everywhere. What is interesting on this table in blue, you can see the operating conditions. Very simplified. Huh? Of course, we have the temperature or the range of temperature, and we have also the main phenomena you have to face. For example, for the steam generator, as I told you this morning, we have this oxidation, which is not a key problem. You have also wastage. What is wastage is uh, typically what I explained yesterday. When you have a, 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 rupture, uh, a rupture of the confinement, an ingress of steam, you create soda and hot soda, and uh, we have an impact on the neighboring pipes. We call that wastage. On the main vessel, we have also creep, creep fatigue, aging, okay, aging effects. Uh, on the, so, um, we have also in some places, uh, we see some fatigue, which is induced by the stratification, temperature stratification in the reactor. Particularly, this is a typical uh, phenomena we can have with, uh, uh, with uh, liquid metal coolant, okay. So this stratification can induce some uh, embrightenment, I would say. Another point, uh, which is sometimes uh, discussed, uh, another point which is uh, sometimes discussed, is uh, at the free level of the sodium. In Don't the do what? Please mute your microphones. Yeah. So on the surface of the sodium and uh, near the wall, we have. Uh, we have what we call a, a risk of uh, nitrization due to if there is some nitride, uh, nitrogen, you can have some, maybe some embrightenment. But it is not, has not been proven at this temperature. Uh, a po important point, yes, you, you have to notice. You could say that in the upper part, we have the temperature of the hot plenum. It means 550. In fact, in uh, these uh, reactors, we have a system where a part of the cold sodium is uh, circulates around the, near the main vessel and come back in the, in the cold plenum just in order to protect the vessel and to maintain the vessel, let's say, below, below 400 degrees Celsius. So it means that you, we are in good conditions in order to uh, limit uh, creep, uh, creep fatigue on this, uh, on this, uh, on this reactor. Um, okay, so, uh, and for the core materials, for the first core and next ones, it was foreseen uh, for the cladding uh, <coughs> space and space where uh, IEM1, it's in fact uh, 
1515 titanium. Uh, uh, and uh, so we have a, a certain number of data okay, on this uh, alloy. And uh, we have a mechanical properties database up to 1,000 degrees Celsius, which is available, modeling. We have also, uh, we, we address the welding process and so on. So uh, the resistance, uh, it, we have assumed an hypothesis of 120 dPa for this, uh, for that. And for, for the future, there is a so-called ODS, uh, oxide dispersed um, steel. In fact, this is a specific technique to produce these steels, which are maybe uh, more favorable with regard to the swelling for example, the swelling properties, and uh, the target was uh, 150 dPa. About the X-CAN material, okay, you, uh, you know that the pins are inside uh, uh, hexagonal, hexagonal can. Um, it is a ferrito-martensitic steel called EM10, okay, and uh, uh, we have a mechanical properties database up to 900 degrees Celsius. And uh, we had the data coming from irradiation, of course. This is important to have uh, reliable data uh, coming from some irradiations. Okay? And we have a, a code for this part. Uh, uh, you know what is codification? Codification is like... Uh, uh, ah. uh, It's a code where you have a recommendations for the engineering, uh, for the designers. And uh, of course, uh, we have uh, ISME, ISME, for example, but uh, in France and in some other countries, we use also OGSME. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, in France uh, RCCMR code uh, uh, with uh, AFSEN, uh, French association, uh, which is uh, um, which is the, which developed the, this tool. It's used for ITER, for example. It's uh, used by Indians also for LPFDR, and we use also. And we introduce periodically uh, some recommendations. Uh, but for that, we need to uh, to have a good exchange between uh, the designer, expression of needs, and how to demonstrate some recommendations because we it's not possible to introduce uh, new recommendations for the designers without, to, without uh, definition and argu arguments uh, based on, uh, for example, experiments or uh, uh, correct analysis of some feedback and so on and so on. So, and for the co uh, core materials, we have a so-called RAMSES. We develop a RAMSES. Okay. Uh, so uh, what is important is, uh, in terms of R&D, you know that there are a lot of activities, maybe less than for heavy, heavy liquid metals, because the challenges are less, uh, of course, for sodium. Huh? Nevertheless, there is a necessity to have, a, uh, to have a, a correct analysis of the feedback. And we are lucky because uh, in the, for sodium, for sodium fast reactors uh, in the world, there was some uh, reactors. and. Uh, since a long time, and so we have the possibility to analyze the, the data, the, some data. For example, for Phoenix, we have some uh, samples having uh, 130,000 hours of operation, for example. Super Phoenix is low, lowest, of course, because uh, some components uh, <laughs> uh, where the, the operation duration was not so long, but um, in the, in the, in the I would say in steady state uh, conditions. So we need to, we can analyze, uh, when you analyze the samples, you need also to analyze, but to know exactly what were the environmental conditions. Uh, it means uh, temperature, uh, transients uh, sometimes, uh, effect of uh, maybe some operations like cleaning, uh, aging effect, creep, cycling fatigue, blah, 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 irradiation, of course, sometimes. So we have a knowledge R&D uh, data, and, um, but it's necessary to have a robust data. If you want to extrapolate to 60 years, it's necessary to have more, uh, more data. So this is the reason why we have some tests, even now, in order to accumulate hours of uh, operation on the samples, in order to have more uh, uh, pertinent 
in, important information for the future. Okay, so, uh, and of course, you can see on the, on the left, on the right, sorry, some uh, mechanical tests in hot laboratories, for example, in Saclay. Uh, damage mode in, uh, in an SFR, you can, uh, of course, we are taking care about shear, uh, shear buckling, buckling under pressure, excessive deformation, uh, creep fatigue, uh, high cycle fatigue. Why? Because uh, we are in a liquid metal system. And, uh, but we have, uh, as uh, you have seen, we don't mention a lot of uh, aggressivity, I would say, of, of the liquid metal, okay? It's more a question of temperature and transients of temperature and so on. About the core materials, uh, okay, uh, yes, for the Astrid demonstrator 110 in the range of temperature 480 to 700 degrees Celsius. Um, for future SFRs, uh, maybe we are, uh, our target would be higher in terms of uh, DPA. Uh, uh, so, what are the main environmental effects of ma on materials with liquid metal coolants, okay? Uh, generally, this is general, it's not only for sodium. Uh, you have a neutron flux, uh, neutron flux on particularly on fuel cladding, under core structures, temperature, uh, temperature, temperature gradients, temperature cycling also, uh, instabilities and drifts, liquid metal chemistry, uh, uh, local sodium velocities and pressure. Here we have not indicated what we call DBTT, uh, ductile brittle uh, transition temperature. Uh, it was a point we addressed, for example, for Megapi project, because uh, when you have a uh, phyletic T91 uh, still, uh, due to the irradiation, strong irradiation due to proton and the neutrons, of course, we have to deal with this, uh, with this uh, potential phenomena. But it was a way also, thanks to some R&D, we perform uh, before Megapi with the lead business, before in a so-called Lizor experiment, we have seen that uh, it was possible to demonstrate that during one year, we will have no, issue, uh, no problems with this, uh, uh, with this uh, issue. Uh, the DBTT, uh, the DBTT was, uh, remains below, below the operating temperature so we remain in the ductile uh, domain, okay? So it was an uh, interesting point. Uh, about involved phenomena, of course, on structural materials, we have the general corrosion. We discussed that uh, yesterday, very briefly. Deposition, what we say of activated corrosion products and impact on contamination, is more an issue linked to the dosimetry. It's not really an issue for the mechanical uh, behavior of components. Embrittlement can be desquamation. What is desquamation is when you have an oxide on the surface, possibility that you produce some particles because the, the oxide is not uh, strongly linked to the, to the substrate. Activation, potential stress corrosion cracking on coolant, okay, activation, sodium contamination, and so on. Uh, and the, on the gas, contamination, but uh, so, we will come back on this point. Uh, the context for the, for the Astrid, generally we consider that uh, we have a very satisfactory feedback regarding behavior when in contact with high purity sodium. So if you keep oxygen content below three ppm, let's say three ppm, we consider that, uh, uh, okay, the uh, behavior of material is uh, very, very interesting and uh, very attractive. We don't face any, really, any difficulty, uh, not significant difficulty, and it is a feedback which is shared with all our partners who have operated uh, sodium, uh, sodium facilities. Uh, here, you have the same table as previous, but I have indicated in red what is uh, relevant for the sodium. Uh, for the neutron flux, it's mainly on fuel cladding, we have to check the behavior on under core structures, even if we know that, uh, for example, for Phoenix or some, we uh, maybe in BN600, they didn't face any big difficulty due to that. Sodium chemistry is mainly oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, 
uh, involved phenomena on structural materials. Uh, we have to deal with the general, generalized corrosion and mass transfer. I explained already that. It's more a question of contamination of structure, which is important to know in terms of dosimetry for the, uh, in terms of dosimetry for the, when you have to, uh, to repair, for example, and so on. Uh, deposition impact on contamination. Embrightenment, desquamation is not really an issue. Okay, in particular, it's more an issue for, for heavy liquid metals. Uh, potential stress corrosion cracking is typical uh, problem of uh, sodium in this case because when you have, a, uh, we, I will come back on this point uh, later. We discussed already, but I will give you more, more information. On the coolant, uh, non specific issue except uh, maybe we have some, we produce some particles of uh, sodium chromite, okay? And uh, some sodium chromite, but generally uh, the, the size of these particles is rather, rather small. You don't, there is no uh, real risk of uh, plugging with these kind of particles. Uh, in the copper gas, uh, not only we have uh, noble gas like uh, xenon, uh, xenon and krypton, but also we have cesium. I explained this morning. And uh, cesium, uh, we have a volatility, higher volatility from cesium. So, and target objective is uh, 60, uh, 60 years. But a question we have is what about uh, the impact on the particles for uh, 60 years? So I think uh, we, we need to have a deeper, uh, deeper analysis of this point about particles because maybe uh, we have some feedback. We are not, uh, we are far from 60 years, even if we have a, a good uh, evaluation of the production of particles, but it's a point to be, to increase, uh, we need to increase the reliability of uh, our evaluation. Um, okay, well, you know this figure. Okay, corrosion. I don't come back on that. Uh, here you have, uh, okay, some characteristic. Uh, okay, you, we, as you have seen, uh, we have developed a code, Oscar Sodium, to study the transfer of radio contamination. Uh, here you can see uh, facilities in Saclay. Uh, corrosion studies are carried out not in Cavarache, but in Saclay. And uh, if you want to have uh, more information, you have here a reference, uh, but uh, uh, Jean-Louis Courreau, uh, he's the name of this uh, researcher, uh, has done a lot of activities uh, related to corrosion since uh, this, uh, this year, but uh, there, there are some uh, corrosion studies are carried out in the so-called Corona, Corona facility. In fact, here you can see this is some, uh, I would say some vessels, small vessels in which we have uh, sodium, control of, uh, control of the oxygen, and uh, possibility to have a rotation in order to simulate, uh, to simulate a realistic condition. Sodium water reaction, okay, you know this slide. Uh, just, uh, but there is an impact on materials, okay. You have an, here, the, what you have to look here is this. Here you have a picture where you have, a, a, at this, uh, on my pointer, you have an impact, okay, you can see that the pipe has been uh, heated by the reaction. And uh, generally, uh, you have uh, a chemical effect, uh, temperature effect, we're inducing a swelling, and of course, mechanical effect after. Uh, at the beginning, you can have uh, no leak, and then increase of the leak. Uh, the there is a phenomenology that can be more or less uh, fast. Uh, Risk of corrosion cracking after repair. Uh, stress corrosion cracking is a very localized corrosion with small amounts of aqueous soda. We have a corrosion process characterized by transgarbonal cracks, okay, in austenitic steels. If you look, we have a Hoffman, what we call Hoffman diagram, okay? And, uh, and uh, we, here, you can see on the, on the right side, you have always the same Hoffman diagram. Here you have the stress corrosion cracking area for stainless steel. You have to notice that this uh, phenomena occurs at relatively low temperature. 
up to, let's say, up to 200 degrees Celsius. And uh, what is important is to avoid uh, to have in uh, some remote place some sodium hydroxide. Typically, when you open a circuit, if you have a moisture, hair and moisture, you have, uh, you can have a production of soda, and after that, when you feel again, the, or you heat up the, the circuit and feel again with sodium, you can create, a, can uh, locally have a cracks, and so you can have damages. So for that, uh, so uh, generally the domain is between uh, 120 and 200 degrees Celsius, and uh, when you have between uh, 30 to 80 percent of uh, caustic soda in the area, and uh, there is a strategy to there is a strategy to avoid that by appropriate procedure, drying the drain the gas, drying the local before to fill with the sodium. So there is a specific uh, procedure which has been applied successfully on the uh, particularly on Phoenix reactor. Uh, so here you have the recommendation with regard to uh, the stress corrosion cracking. Uh, um, recommendation on design rules and operating procedures. So we have to avoid uh, aqueous hydroxide formation by design and draining options just in order to avoid the possibility to have this uh, sodium uh, hydroxide, uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide. Uh, we have a procedure also with, uh, in order to avoid uh, to stay too much, too long time at in this range of temperature when you fill the, the system. Uh, the washing procedure when you have to wash your systems, you take care for a sick sodium retention elimination. It can be done during the design, of course. Uh, you try to avoid some place where you can keep some sodium. And uh, um, for Phoenix, all removal components dismounted, cleaned, inspected, repaired, and we have uh, generally uh, satisfactory reused uh, uh, reuse in the reactor. Uh, uh, and also for the feasibility demonstration, we had a very valuable feedback from SFR operation also. So it means that uh, it's, a, it's a potential problem, serious problem, but we have the tools and the procedures to avoid that. Uh, maybe I, uh, I, I, I think the first day I explained this point, yeah? You have a, uh, here, this is a pipe below the insulating uh, material, thermal insulating material, and we can have a phenomenon of corrosion, deep corrosion. We have a collaboration with uh, Japan, with Dr. Uh, Tomohiro Furukawa on this topic. <laughs> We have a common publication, a common paper, and uh, we address this point. But now it's a problem we, well, we avoid, and particularly you have seen that we have uh, innovation, we have innovation, and thanks also to uh, a correct uh, det leak detection system. Uh, here is just a, a view on the, here you, uh, it's, uh, you have the core, okay, here, Above, you have the what we call above core structure, heat exchanger. In this end, here we have the so-called redan. So the redan separates the hot plenum from the cold plenum. And here, you have a list of uh, items which uh, can uh, impact the mechanical behavior of the walls or the structures. And so you can see, for example, one uh, key component is the above core structure. You can have here uh, thermal fatigue because you can imagine at the outlet of the core of each fuel assembly, you have a, a jet of sodium, okay, that impinge, impact the, the upper core structure. And so this, uh, this component has to be correctly uh, sized and so on. So we have also some stratification, some uh, stratification, strati you know what is stratification is a variation in a short distance of the temperature, a gradient. And if you have a fluctuation of the levels, you are, can induce the fatigue. Yeah. Uh, here you have, uh, we have codes for that, and trio hu. Yeah, here you can see a picture where you have the movements of the, movements of the sodium. Uh, 
Of course, uh, we use the mock-up with water also for a part of the validation of this tool. And, uh, and uh, okay, so thermohydraulic impact on material. Uh, thermohydraulic studies are relevant for material analysis. Uh, we have uh, to justify thermomechanical criteria for a four-year design life, for, of course, for the sub-assemblies in sodium, 60-year design life for most of the primary internals, and below uh, for the large components. We can imagine that, for example, it's possible to change a pump after 20, 30 years. Uh, same for intermediate heat exchanger. Uh, we have to take into account the planned uh, transients, like for like for reactor maintenance, shutdown, scram. Same design life uh, goals as above for, the, uh, for this uh, taking into account uh, the planet transients. Accidental transients, uh, short-term behavior of the cladding, excrams, and so on. So there are many issues, and a lot of them are the thermohydraulic is important factor, environmental factor. Here you can see for the modeling approach in terms of thermodynamics, uh, what is new is that uh, you can imagine that uh, only a CFD is uh, very complex, okay? It's uh, impossible and maybe not very useful. We have, uh, we use a system code, you know, a system code which, uh, uh, in fact, we have a description of the circulation and for each area you have, a, a, I would say, a, a model, okay? And uh, if you have a perturbation, uh, somewhere, you study the propagation of this perturbation in the world system. Uh, we have a Qatar code, which is, uh, we have a Qatar version for sodium. We use Qatar also for lead, first reactor. There was some exchange with the lead, uh, heavy liquid metal community. And uh, we have also locally a CFD, a CFD uh, model, Trio U, which is uh, our reference. And locally, if it is necessary to have a better description in one place where we think that it, could be, it is necessary to have a better uh, description, we, have, uh, we can uh, have a C locally a CFD. So we have a coupling between the system code and the CFD code in order to have a good description of... Uh, so you can see um, I have a, well, we have a team working on this item in Instacle also. Uh, phenomena of interest, uh, there are many phenomena we, <laughs> we are interested in such a complex uh, system. Maybe I am not going to, to describe in detail, but uh, the phenomena of in the output jet mixing at the core outlet, you can imagine that the outlet of the core, we have a lot of phenomena, uh, recirculations and so on, because in just in front of the outlet, we have the upper core structure. Uh, we have also uh, thermal shocks during transients, uh, free level fluctuations, I uh, already uh, spoke about that. Uh, wetting phenomena, okay, you remember what I said about that. Uh, with the sodium, it's a, it's a good, uh, generally good uh, consequences because we don't, we are not, uh, we don't face really uh, liquid metal embridement like with heavy liquid metals and uh, a uh, big corrosion issues. Nevertheless, we have uh, the wetting, uh, when you have a good wetting, we have a good accuracy of measurements, okay? Uh, a good, uh, for wetting, wetting is good for in-service inspection also. Uh, mass transfer, okay, impact on mass transfer. Thermal exchange in heat exchanger, in some heat exchangers. Uh, it doesn't mean that, for example, for the large intermediate heat exchanger where you have a large uh, exchange, thermal exchange surface, we have for superphonics, it's what, 1,200 uh, 1, uh, square meters of surface of exchange for each, about, for each uh, intermediate heat exchanger. So if you distribute your radio contamination products with uh, nothing, it has no impact on the heat transfer, okay? But for a smaller heat exchanger, can be, for example, if you accumulate, but generally the fact that the reactor is always operated in a non-isothermal uh, situation, you don't dissolve the, the products in the sodium, uh, and so on. Uh, easy requirements, this is important, the service. Uh, I have already uh, discussed about this point. So impo it's important to characterize the, and sometimes to check the, uh, the good 
uh, health of some wells, for example, in some particular uh, places, okay, particularly, for the example, for the undercore structures. Uh, about the materials issues are also on the core catcher, okay? So, for example, we investigate the possibility to have a, a core catcher, a core catcher here below, below the, below the strum back, below the core, and um, we have this uh, uh, developments, okay? Uh, here also, so we had some studies in order to study the behavior of zircon, for, for example. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to have, uh, I would say, um, how to say, we don't want to have, uh, for example, uh, decomposition of oxygen and to introduce, uh, because the, the core catcher is always in contact with sodium. So we need that during the, all these years and uh, during 60 years, we, don't, we have to avoid any release of particles or uh, oxygen, okay? It's not, it's not good to have a source of oxygen. So there was uh, these investigations, and at the end, we decided to, to have maybe to move more to uh, molybdenum, maybe some uh, core catcher without, without uh, ceramics, because what is the behavior of ceramics um, during a long time of operation? It was not so easy to, to understand. And I finish my last, uh, my last uh, slide is here. Uh, we have, uh, uh, in order to study this uh, environmental effects on materials, and particularly the interaction between the, the coolant with various temperatures, with uh, a concentration, uh, various concentration of oxygen, even if in sodium fast reactor, it's much easier because we work below three ppm Ah, it's okay. Huh? And um, so, in this case, we have uh, uh, investigations about the environmental conditions and factors that affect materials behavior relevant for the structural integrity uh, or com of confinement barriers and components. This is uh, one part of the activity of this OECD expert group. We have, uh, in the OECD, we have uh, contributions from many countries. Huh? Uh, of course, uh, there are European countries, but also we have also uh, contribution from uh, from Russia, uh, from uh, China also they entered, and uh, also from uh, uh, from 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 uh, sorry uh, Korea, Korea and Japan. Yeah. So there is a first uh, topic which is uh, how to address the environmental conditions. And the idea is to address the environmental effects relevant for construction standards. It means that uh, if we need uh, new recommendations, we need to have demonstrations. So the uh, goal of this uh, working group is not only to synthesize the, the issues we can face, both for sodium and heavy liquid metals, okay, we work together, but also uh, to uh, 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 importance is uh, important to also say what we need in terms of R and D to validate some new recommendations. Yes, for at the level of the design. Second uh, part. Yeah, I finish. <laughs> coolant and cover gas. Uh, coolant and cover gas issues. Here, the focus is placed on issues relevant for radiological impact assessment, operating and handling. It's more to give some recommendations for the operation, not for the design, but for the operation. And the very important point we, uh, we, uh, we, we have also is the thermohydraulics, and particularly for heavy liquid metals, because in sodium we have enough feedback, but uh, it was an important point for the uh, heavy liquid metal community. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Christian. Now, last chance to ask question, questions. Wait, just wait. Where is it? Thank you again, Dr. Leger. Um, I have a question about the... Um, I, I see that you make a lot of um, material testing and regarding to radiation and uh, thermal stresses. 
but how about the, the critical welds uh, in, these, in these materials? Because ah. after welding, they can change the, the microstructure and, mm. and in ah. this long-term situation. Really? Ah, for the long time. Uh, it's, uh, for example, it's uh, a point we have to address, for example, to uh, when we have a weld, you have a, what we call the ZAT, affected uh, temperature uh, zone, okay? Yeah, ZAT. Affected zone. Yeah, affected zone. And uh, effectively, um, we have to take care with, uh, uh, in case of, if we want to have a decontamination, for example, after cleaning, um, maybe the, the, we have to test on some samples the behavior of these zones. So means that uh, when you think about uh, okay, the welding, you have also to think about uh, potential cleaning and decontamination after. Nevertheless, uh, generally they, <laughs> of course, they weld as they, <laughs> with the best the process they know. But uh, after that, we have to have a, a good idea about uh, uh, about the behavior of the ZAT uh, 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 with, uh, I would say, uh, in contact with some uh, uh, water or bath acidic baths. For that. Okay, but you mean like uh, uh, to try to project the, the behavior? Because well, there was some studies. Unpredictable, uh, yes. There, there was uh, some studies, but above all, what we are, we are very lucky because also Currently, we have the, uh, a strategy to analyze a lot of samples coming from Phoenix reactor, because Phoenix uh, was operated between 1973 and 2009. Okay, to, uh, to, uh, structure yes, a structure testing. There will be mechanical tests, and we have also to establish relationship between the, the sample and the life and the operating conditions. So. So there is a, a, a deep strategy in order to have a full benefit from these uh, samples from Phoenix. And of course, some specific tests also. Hmm? Uh, so uh, you mentioned that uh, the ceramic is not being considered for sacrificial material in core catcher. But ESBWR and VBR, they're already implementing like Portland cement and bricks of ferric oxide, aluminum oxide. So is this oxygen problem only for sodium cooled fast reactor or there will be problem for these reactors also? I mean, they're already uh, being implemented. Excuse me, I have not, uh, well, what's your question? Sacrificial, sacrificial ah, material. Ah, for sacrificial material for the core catcher. Core catcher yeah. yeah. So ESBWR, and uh, we, they have already implemented core catcher with Portland cement mm -hmm. and bricks of aluminum oxide and ferric oxide. VVE are also doing the same thing. They are creating the core mm -hmm. catcher. So is this oxygen problem, you, you just said the problem can be happen. Is this only for the sodium cooled reactor or uh, this problem will also happen ah, for those? No, it's, uh, but first it's uh, of course for sodium fast reactor. For lead fast reactor, uh, they don't have to address uh, a contact between uh, uh, between the coolant and the core catcher because uh, in case of civil accident melting the the corium goes on the surface probably <laughs> probably <laughs> it doesn't mean that the situation is safe because they uh, have not been never seen um, good description of the scenario of movement of the corium and so on but uh, for example for sodium fast reactor what we foresee is uh, there from below the core there is a transfer transfer pipes in order that the melted the melted uh, corium is uh, directed towards the sacrificial material uh, sacrificial material and of course between the 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 supporting structure and the core catcher effectively there are the necessity to study uh, very deeply what we call the fuel coolant interaction. FCCI. Yeah, and uh, because you can have uh, in this kind of scenario, you have to in, uh, investigate this, uh, this phenomenon. This is the reason why in Calarash, we have a, a project to develop a large facility to study in detail all these uh, phenomenologies we can face both for fast reactors, sodium, let's say, and uh, also for light water reactors also called, uh, it, uh, we have already a facility called uh, um, a building, experimental 
building dedicated to civil accidents called Plinius, but, uh, but uh, there is a project called the Safety, uh, safety in order to develop new, new facilities in order to have a better description of the interaction phenomena between the coolant and the, and the fuel. And for that also we have some uh, collaboration discussions with some other partners, okay, they are in Japan particularly. Uh, in India also they have a facility called SOFI. So there are some uh, facilities, there are not so many, but uh, uh, for this item it's clearly a necessity to have a deep discussions because uh, by it's not so easy to investigate such complex phenomena. It's the case for uh, fast reactors. It is also the case for, uh, for light water reactors where you can have uh, some kind of separation between the oxides and the metal phase, which is on the surface, inducing so what we call focusing effect on the, on the structural yeah. material. Crust area, metal zone. A layer yeah. of metal yeah. zone. Yeah. It's uh, pro, uh, an issue which is deeply uh, investigated, in, for example, in Kadarash, but not only in Kadarash, of course. So which material is considered for a fast reactor, a sacrificial material? Ah, but it's not, it was not really a, a conclusion, but what we... Um, Oh, maybe we think about, it. there is a solution which was investigated in uh, Russia for uh, BN 1200, I think. It's the uh, molybdenum, if I remember well. There is a, uh, but uh, to be checked, huh? I think it is that. So there is no, if I understand, there is no ceramic, okay? But uh, we investigate the possibility to have, uh, for example, for example, zirconia, but, uh, how to demonstrate that uh, during uh, 60 years you have a good stability of this uh, uh, sacrificial material? Because we have to have in mind that it's impossible to, it's impossible to change. You install this uh, system before. We imagine also that we could have a liner on the surface in order to protect uh, below. But um, uh, it was the reason why, one of the reasons why we said, okay, we need more time to qualify the core catcher. Okay, this is clearly a point, important point for, for these uh, 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 fast reactors. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Christian, interesting question from the chat. Uh, from Dauda Saleh. From safety point of view, what is the basic difference between homogeneous street code and huh. heterogeneous code? Ah, um, ah the, the basic difference? Yes, it's, uh, I think, uh, I hope I'm not an expert, but uh, homogeneous is when you mix with, uh, uh, you, you mix with uh, actinides, minor actinides, it's a homogeneous mix. Heterogeneous, I think you have uh, a part with uh, uh, uranium plutonium oxide, but you can have also uh, some, uh, you can have also some uh, specific area where you have more actinides and so on. I think you okay. think, yeah. Okay. If, uh, I, I hope uh, it's the correct answer, but I think it's... Uh okay, any other? Any other before Sana? Yes, please. Sir. Thank you uh, for your presentation. Uh, in the uh, last day, uh, you said that uh, in a Phoenix reactor, the heat accumu accumulates in a some corner of the core. Corner of the core. Uh, the heat accumulates in a corner uh, assemblies. If uh, remember correctly. The heat uh, accumulates uh, in the corner assemblies. Corner assemblies. Corner, uh, near to the wall okay. assemblies. Uh -huh. no, that is no, no, no. Uh, the heat, uh, the super phoenix, uh, uh, the heated, accumulated, the hot zones in the near to the corner assemblies. What, is it? what do you mean by corner assemblies? Corner, uh, the, the assemblies near to the wall. Assemblies. Uh, uh, fuel assemblies uh, in a phoenix 
the, the heat, the, 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 uh, the hot zone near to the walls. In the center, I guess, hottest in the center. Power. Uh, the I most powerful in the center. I think I no, uh, I no, think what I said yesterday uh, about uh, the, some radial variations, yeah. I said maybe, but I'm not sure you refer to that. I said that in order to avoid, to avoid a hot, hot uh, uh, temperature near the main vessel, we have a recirculation of, uh, we have a VAIR, uh, w E R N yeah. uh, system, where you recirculate cold sodium in order to avoid to have a too high temperature on the main vessel. Uh, I think I didn't speak about uh, the... Uh, you have a picture, very uh, old picture about this. So I... Yesterday? Uh, yeah, yeah, about, uh, speak about the Phoenix uh, thermohydraulic uh, Briefly, so I uh, check this. I if you <laughs> okay. Uh, so I want to uh, uh, about this uh, have uh, the, this optimization about this uh, phenomena in a Astrid project for a thermohydraulic performance uh, of the new design compared to Super Phoenix. Uh, uh, sorry, I've not uh, catched the the problem you 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 refer to. Okay, I have another question. I uh, discuss about in a brief. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's uh, about okay. about the uh, uh, validation we of the. We have to finish now. Okay. Validation. The validation of the CFT. Uh, in uh, you talk about the validation of CFT and they say that it use the water instead. Yes. Ah, yes. The the instead of the yes, uh, yes. sodium. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's partially uh, validation. It's a partial validation, but for the main circulation. We can use this mock-up, which is, uh, the scale is uh, maybe one, one, one to four, okay, uh, scale divided by four, the, I think I have to check, but, and uh, it's, uh, <coughs> with water, effectively, we can have a, a good idea of the recirculation and so on, uh, using uh, colors, for example. This is one way. And you have seen that the geometry is very similar to the, to the super, uh, Astrid geometry. There is another way. I visit, for example, in, uh, in uh, uh, Obninsk. Uh, you have a facility, uh, B200, I think, the name of this facility. Instead, to have a, a, a geometry very similar to the reactor, in fact, you have a circulation, and uh, each zone is represented by a volume. Okay, and you check the distribution of, uh, you, you follow the distribution of volumes, okay, and you describe uh, the system with uh, uh, a different approach, I would say, by a systemic approach. Yeah. And uh, coming back to our facility, of course, we have this uh, mock-up with water, but also we need uh, to have, of course, for some specific geometries, it, it would be useful uh, to, to have uh, some uh, uh, maybe some mock-ups, if, if the CFD is not enough uh, robust to describe, uh, to describe correctly uh, the, the recirculations and the temperature transient and so on. Because uh, with water, of course, we are not in the same conditions as we have with... Uh, By uh, the way, what, when you model with water, which criteria you use? Reynolds, ah. Gross, Gross Gov, I don't know. Uh, Reynolds, yes, and uh, uh, in detail, uh, yeah, we ask, you asked me uh, the similitude rules. Uh, I have, uh, I can check and uh, send you a re relevant uh, paper on that. Okay, it's thank my you. my colleague, uh, Yves Guenadou, this is the name of the expert. S can, uh, thank, thank you, you the for, the great, for the great talk. So we we'll stop now, okay? So we have, unfortunately, we have to stop now. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for.